Dead spots in a tank are more than just ugly. They can cause nutrient imbalances, huge algae outbreaks, and if left unchecked for too long, they can even crash your tank. Luckily, there's an easy way to prevent dead spots from happening or to getting rid of them if they appear. Dead spots are easy to recognize because they just look like little piles of debris inside of your tank. They always show up when the amount of flow is insufficient for the density of the piece of detritus it's trying to remove. Whereas something like fish waste requires only gentle flow to keep it suspended in the water column, other pieces of detritus will require more flow. Sometimes dead spots really aren't a big deal because they may occur in a section of your tank where it's really easy to remove them via a weekly water change. But that's not always the case. The easiest way to prevent dead spots is to consider these three things when setting up your aquarium. The aquascape, coral placement, and wave makers and powerheads. You need to build your aquascape in such a way as to minimize dead spots. How do you do that? By visualizing flow patterns. The return nozzles will be your first consideration. On certain tanks, especially where you have a powerful return pump that turns over the entire water volume 10 to 15 times per hour, the return nozzles may provide adequate flow throughout your entire tank. Take for example, the Innovative Marine 14 gallon Peninsula tank behind me. The Mighty Jet return pump is so strong, I didn't need to use any additional wave makers. In this scenario, the flow pattern is easy to visualize as the return nozzle is in the upper right hand rear of the tank. The water will move in a circular motion from back to front, top to bottom. So designing a scape that allows for the uninhibited movement of water along that route is key. This was easily accomplished by having a centralized aquascape that sloped from low to high front to back. That way the water movement will flow freely around the sides of the aquascape and as it hits the front of the scape, it's able to go up and over. But for most of us, especially with larger tanks where we aim to turn over the entire water column about three times an hour, the return nozzles will not provide nearly enough flow sufficient for our tank. In this scenario, we need to build an aquascape that takes into consideration the future placement of wave makers. Most tanks will typically have a left to right or right to left water movement, but some tanks will have a back to front water movement. In either of these scenarios, the same strategies are going to apply. Leave space around your aquascape for water to flow and build your aquascape from low to high so that water can flow up and over your aquascape as well. The second way to prevent dead spots is by making smart decisions as to where to place your coral. You not need to only consider the flow requirements of that individual coral, but how the placement of that coral will affect the overall flow pattern for the entire tank. For example, it may not be a great idea to place larger, faster growing corals in a location that will block the flow in your tank. And the third and final consideration when trying to prevent dead spots in your tank is the number, size, type, and placement of wave makers in your aquarium. First of all, it's going to be important to know the difference between conical and laminar flow patterns. The majority of wave makers are somewhat circular in their shape and they put out a conical flow of water. This can be narrow or wide depending on the individual wave maker. But there are a subset of wave makers that we usually refer to as gyres that are long and slender and put out a laminar flow pattern. The easiest way to think of a laminar flow pattern is it puts out a narrow, thin sheet of flow rather than a conical formation. So conical or laminar, one isn't necessarily better than the other, but one will likely be a better fit for your tank. Let's look at two examples. On my Innovative Marine 40 Softy tank, I chose a CJ Extreme Wave Maker. I needed a more dispersed flow pattern that wouldn't give too much flow to my soft corals. A laminar flow pump would have such a concentrated flow pattern that it would wreak havoc on my softies. But looking at my Waterbox frag system, the Max Spec Gyre was the perfect solution. The width of the tank is long enough to allow the laminar paper-like flow to disperse a bit before reaching the other side of the tank. And the length of the pump itself means that the majority of the tank will receive adequate water movement. If I were to use a traditional more conical shaped wave maker, I would need at least 
two wave makers for my water box frag tank to achieve the same amount of flow. So you didn't get it quite right. Your aquascape, coral placement, and wave makers are conspiring against you to create dead spots. These little pockets of detritus are mocking you and just daring you to get rid of them. So here's what you can do in order from least to most drastic. Number one, manual removal. This doesn't actually get rid of the dead spot, but it does manage it. But let's say the dead spot is in a rear corner location that's really easy to access using a gravel vacuum, then why not just vacuum out all that detritus once a week during your water change? Well, the second way to get rid of a dead spot is by adding a small, inexpensive power head. Sometimes dead spots are just impossible to reach. Oftentimes that can be in the middle of an aquascape, maybe underneath an arch where you just can't get a siphon going. If you only have that one dead spot, then a really easy fix is to just purchase an inexpensive power head like the Nua MP line, drop it in your tank, aim it at the dead spot, and you're done. The third way to get rid of dead spots in your tank is by adjusting the overall flow pattern. Maybe your tank has multiple dead spots or you just don't want to stare at a utility pump sitting inside your beautiful display. In that case, rethinking your entire flow pattern may be in order. But use caution here if you already have corals in place. A change in flow pattern can easily stress out your corals and may require you to move them. Sometimes changing your flow pattern is as simple as changing from a conical to a laminar flow pump or just adding an additional wave maker. Or it could be more drastic and moving the wave makers from the sides of your tank to the rear of your tank, creating a completely different flow pattern. Unfortunately, I can't give you a simple answer here because there is no one right way to do this. It's going to depend on your individual tank and aquascape. But I can promise you that after your tank has been up and running for a while, you will easily get to know the flow patterns and know the areas of your system that are lacking. Just remember to use caution when changing the flow pattern of your tank because it can drastically affect the health and wellness of your corals. The fourth method for getting rid of dead spots is fragging and moving corals. I think this one's actually probably number three. I think changing the flow pattern is a bit more drastic, but we're already here, so we're gonna say it's number four. Sometimes dead spots just develop over time as your coral colonies grow and spread. It may mean that it's time to frag and move some of those larger pieces to areas where they won't affect the flow pattern as much. And the fifth and final way to get rid of dead spots from your tank is to tear down and build a new aquascape. Especially if this is your first saltwater tank, you may have just built your aquascape in such a way as to destroy any potential for a positive flow pattern. Rather than just try to fix it with more power heads, it might be best just to bite the bullet, tear it down, and build a new aquascape. Hopefully you're now able to solve your dead spot problems, but what about some of those other super common problems beginners face like cyanobacteria or aptasia? Click here for more easy solutions to complex problems. And as always everyone, thanks for watching. Happy reefing, be well. We'll see you next time.